Shalom everyone. I want to share with you guys a connection today between Moses, Jesus and us. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 21 to 23. Let's have a read. And has brought forth thy people Israel out of the land of Egypt with signs and wonders and with a strong hand and with a stretched out arm and with great terror and has given them this land, which thou didst swear to their fathers to give them, a land flowing with milk and honey. And they came in and possessed it, but they obeyed not thy voice, neither walked in thy law. They have done nothing of all that thou commanded them to do. Therefore thou hast caused all this evil to come upon them. First thing we need to see is that Moses was approved by signs and wonders in front of God and amongst men. The second thing we need to see is the promise or the, or the promised land. That is prophetically also pointing forward to the kingdom of God that will come the new heaven and the new earth. And thirdly, we need to see that the obedience was the biggest factor in front of God. It was to obey him. So now let's see how this connects to Jesus and then here is the connection to Jesus, Acts chapter 2, verse 22, and it says, Peter speaking, ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. Can you see the prophetic looking forward? shown through Moses to Christ, even through the signs and wonders that he did. Isn't it amazing? So now we can see that God has put his stamp of approval on Moses through signs and wonders. He put his stamp of approval on Jesus. Moses was looking forward to Jesus, a prophetic looking forward. And he put his stamp of approval on Jesus through miracle signs and wonders. So what we need to understand from this is that Moses was approved of God by signs and wonders. Jesus is approved of God by signs, miracles, and wonders. Amongst who? Amongst the Israelites, Moses, and then amongst the Israelites again, Jesus, meaning the believers. So now let's have a look at how that connects to us today as his disciples, his subjects, his students, his followers. Okay, into Luke chapter 10, let's have a read. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Verse 9, And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. This is not the twelve apostles we're talking about. This is the next, after the twelve apostles, the seventy disciples. That's like you and me. A believer is a disciple of Jesus. We are a student of Jesus. We are an apprentice of Jesus. And we must walk as Jesus walked. Because he said, I am the way. That means follow him. I am the truth. That means listen to him. And I am the life. That means there is life in no other except Jesus. But we have to walk in the life that he walked and live in the truth that he spoke. And you see, we're going to have a look at those words in a moment. But did you see that it was the 70, not the 12? This destroys any cessationist belief that these things have stopped to cast out devils and to heal the sick. And we jump down to verse 9 and it said, Go into the houses and heal them if there are any who are sick in those places. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Now, Jesus went on to say, do not rejoice that the devils are subject to you in my name, but rather that your name is written in the book of life. So as important as it is for us to have our eyes set on Christ, knowing that our names are first and foremost written in the book of life, it is also important as a secondary uh, importance that we work and operate by the Holy Spirit as the Lord Jesus commanded us to. Let's go and have a look now what Jesus said in John chapter 14. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. 
If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Jesus is speaking to his disciples here and he's saying, believe me, that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And if you don't believe me, that that's the truth, then for the work's sake, believe me. Why? Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Because Jesus was a man approved of God, approved by God, through signs, miracles, and wonders amongst men. You see, believe me for the work's sake, it says. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Now, we need to stop here for a moment and go into this because it says, Jesus is saying that you and I will do greater works than he has done if we believe in him. Whether in quantity or quality doesn't matter, he has said we will do greater works than him as his followers, as his disciples, as those who believe in him. Isn't that wonderful? Now, have a look. He said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Why? So that the Father might be glorified in the Son. You see, equally, the Son needs to be glorified in me and in you. So that in the Son, the Father can be glorified. So that all glory is to our Father in heaven. Hallelujah. You see, and he said, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And finally, this is the point that brings us back to Jeremiah 32 uh, verses 21 and following. If you love me, keep my commandments. You see, in Jeremiah, it says that all that evil came upon them. Why? Because they disobeyed God. They had an inheritance. They had a promise from God. But all that evil came upon them because they disobeyed God. So today, are we disobeying God thinking that we should not walk in miracle signs and wonders? Or are we walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, not quenching the Spirit and not grieving the Spirit, but allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us rather than us trying to lead Him? Are we entering into the promised land? Are we moving in the salvation that we have by Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit who's in us, who seals us? Are we walking in obedience to God? Because Jesus said we would do the same things that he has done. We will walk in that power. We can find it in Mark chapter 16. We can find it in Matthew chapter 28. We can find it in the book of Acts. We can find it even in the Old Testament showing us Moses. The connection between Moses to Jesus and then the connection between Jesus and us. And you see, Jesus said, the Father is in me and I am in the Father. And he said, the works that he has done, we will also do and greater works will we do. But he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So finally, I want to say this. Are all miracle signs and wonders, are they going to guarantee that we enter into the kingdom of God? Absolutely not. We need to see the fruit. Look at the life. Is the life right? Because God sees everything. There is nothing hidden from his sight. There is nothing hidden from his sight. So we must obey God. We must move in obedience and the life of the believer, the disciple, the follower of Jesus Christ must reflect a life of obedience because on that fateful day when Jesus comes, there are going to be many who want to rejoice, but it says they will be weeping and they will be gnashing of teeth and they will say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out devils in your name and do miracles in your name? And the Lord will respond and say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. So may this be a blessing to you guys today. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Live a life of obedience and make sure that you are found to have fruit in you of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God bless you.